Welcome to Living the Catholic Way. Today, we're going to talk about the Holy Mass. I'm Deacon Keith Fournier. Let's begin, as we always do, by going to the Glossary of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And there, we find this said about the Mass. The Eucharist, or principal sacramental celebration of the Church, established by Jesus at the Last Supper, in which the mystery of our salvation, through participation in the sacrificial death and glorious resurrection of Christ is renewed and accomplished. The Catechism continues. The Mass renews the Paschal sacrifice of Christ as the sacrifice offered by the Church. And it explains, it is called Mass from the Latin Misa because of the mission or sending with which the liturgical celebration concludes. Now, what does all this mean? One of the privileges I have as a deacon is to serve the Mass. We have very little specific roles in terms of what we say at the Mass, but it is such an honor to assist the priest. One of the few things we do say is after he gives the final blessing, we give the dismissal. And in Latin, what we say is ite misse est. Now in English, go forth, the Mass is ended. But over the centuries, that is where we got the word Mass in the Western Church, in the Roman Catholic Church. It has always been called the liturgy. And liturgy comes from a Greek word, which means the public work of worship. In the early church, they celebrated the liturgy. Oh, they had other times of prayer, times of prayer and praise and celebration in the homes anywhere because they were in a dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ but they gathered together solemnly on the Lord's Day to celebrate the liturgy. And we know that from the ancient Christian witness. In the Didache, the teaching of the Twelve, the writings of Justin Martyr, and in fact, the liturgy followed a very similar format to what you see today at the Holy Mass. It was broken into two parts. First, the liturgy of the Word, where we hear the Bible proclaimed a reading from the Hebrew Scriptures or the Old Testament, followed by a psalm. And on Sunday, a reading from the epistles, the letters of the apostles to the early churches. And then, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And following that, the priest, or in some instances, the deacon, breaks open the word to feed us on it. And that's called a homily or a sermon. That's followed by the intercessions the prayers of the faithful. That whole part of the Mass, the first part of the Mass, is called the Liturgy of the Word. Then fed on the Word, we proceed to the second part of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Holy Eucharist. And that's where pr the priest standing in Jesus, the High Priest, says the same words that Jesus said. And we know that is a miracle. Heaven touches earth. And the Mass is timeless. And from that altar, we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, the Holy Eucharist. And the word Eucharist is from a Greek word, which means thanksgiving. The Holy Eucharist is the source and the summit of the Christian life. And the Holy Mass is the highest form of worship. Back in 2007, Pope Benedict XVI issued a beautiful apostolic exhortation. It was called On the Eucharist as the source and summit of the life of the church. And he wrote these words concerning those words of dismissal, and I'll end with them. The Pope wrote, I'd like to comment briefly on the observations of the Synod Fathers regarding the dismissal at the end of the Eucharistic celebration. After the blessing, the deacon or the priest dismisses the people with the words, ite, mise, est. These words help us to grasp the relationship between the Mass just celebrated and the mission of Christians in the world. The Pope continued, In antiquity, Misa simply meant dismissal. However, in Christian usage, it gradually took on a deeper meaning. The word dismissal has come to imply a mission. These few words succinctly express the missionary nature of the Church. The people of God might be helped to understand more clearly this essential dimension of the church's life 
if they took the dismissal as a starting point. In this context, it might be helpful to provide new text for the prayer over the people and the final blessing. What was Benedict trying to communicate? The Mass is not the end, but the beginning. After we receive the body and blood of Jesus, after we've heard the Word of God broken open for us to instruct us, we are sent from the church into the world. We are a people sent on mission. And what is that mission? The continuing mission of Jesus Christ. He wants all men and women to know that they are loved by God. And in Him, they can find salvation, freedom from sin, victory over death, and a whole new way of living. And they find that when you and I are faithful to being the missionaries we are being sent to be. So when you hear the dismissal the next time you go to Mass, remember, it's not the end, but the beginning. Now, it's your turn. May Almighty God bless you as you respond to His call to be sent. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.